Let's Make Some Golf Clubs, Volume 2. Welcome to the Make Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and in Volume 1 of Let's Make a Golf Club, which will be up here, we talked about does rimming out a golf club really impact the golf club? How much weight does it remove? And we found out it really wasn't that much. Yes, it was some, but not very much. Now, on this topic, I've decided we're going we're gonna to keep chasing weight, okay? We're going to keep chasing weight in this one and some other stuff. So it's going to be kind of a, each one of these volumes is going to be kind of a multi-topic kind of a video. Now, in this particular one, we have some Mizuno Forged. All right, Mizuno Forged. These are really kind of cool irons. The, they're, you know, it goes hot metal, hot metal pro, forged, and forged chromoly, okay? And they do a pretty good job. Now, the cool part about this one is the gap wedge. The gap, this is one of the few in the Mizuno line, and I still haven't figured out why Mizuno make a gap wedge that fits the rest of the irons, right? This one does, and this thing is cool looking. It fits the it fits the group. It's the right lie angles, right loft angle. Everything about it is just right. Why we don't do that for the rest of them, I still don't understand. Now, we're real quick, real quick on the topic. Center gravity, okay? Center gravity. I want to do a really long video on this one and its impacts, and I will. However, in this one, I just want to speak to it very, very fast. And this is a pitching wedge. This is a five iron. And if you see, I've got a dot there. And I've got a dot there, right? And if you put them together, they look like they're almost in the same spot. And they almost are. However, you have to, there's more to center gravity than just putting a dot on the face. Now, how did I do that? I got a little center gravity unit and it's very, very archaic, but it does work where you balance the club like right there. And that's what you do. So, and then you put a pin up in the middle and then you find the, you find the center gravity. Now there's other dimensions. Center gravity is, is from every direction, right? You can, if you had the, the patience and the ability, there would be a center gravity this way, one this way, one this way, all over the map. That's the beauty of center gravity. However, there are, you know, some of the very big quadrants, like pulling the, like pulling it back, right? We talk about once we pull, make the cavity deeper, that it pulls the center of gravity back. And it does, right? And that, and that impacts the location here as well. How much weight you put here, how much weight you put here, how much weight you put here. All these different things impact center of gravity. Now they go like, oh, it didn't move. And this is the part I was wanting to get to because it was kind of cool. All right, so the, the impact of center of gravity, they look like they're the same. However, using one of these, a digital micrometer, right? Digital micrometer, I measured from the center line to the bottom of the paint, which is in most cases right about the bottom. It's just a little bit more, you see where it goes shiny? I stopped right there at the paint. And I measured, I, you know, of course you gotta be a pretty good mic user when I mean mic, micrometer. Anyway, when I did this, I came up with nineteen thirty-seven. Okay, nineteen thirty-seven, and this is for the five iron, and that would be and that would be in millimeters, uh, millimeters from the bottom, right? And then this guy. Twenty-one forty-seven. Okay, so two millimeters. Now you go, Jim. That's only two millimeters, and I would have to say that you would be correct. It's only two millimeters. However, that's a big deal. All right, it's a big deal when you're talking about getting under the equator of the golf ball and to getting the desired flights that you want. That's important. That's the reason why you hear companies talking about, well, talking about the center of gravity, how it gets under the ball. When the lofts get stronger, that thing's got to go down so that it gets under the ball because center gravity under the center of gravity of the golf ball 
helps create launch. All right, it just does that. Now that's the parts that we, uh, I just wanted to let you know about center gravity. We will really do a whole video on that. Uh, might go into a school, you never know. But that's what I wanted to talk about. All righty, so that's over. <laughs> so now we're, so we got the Mizuno forged for Andrew, went through a fitting, good little golfer, and we ended up setting on some uh, Nippon Modus, Modus Pro 105s, but in black. That is so cool, isn't it? Black with the red label. So it's very, very neat. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at, now this is a, this is a build where I'm not reaming. We did the reaming last time. I'm not, I'm going to ream this time. So we're going to talk about the quality of the build from a weight perspective and from a swing weight perspective. I know a lot of guys, oh my God, swing weight's it. No, it's not. But anyway, we'll talk about it. So I've weighed them all, right? I've weighed all the clubs and they're actually spaced out pretty good. They're within that seven to eight gram uh, deflection, right? Seven, eight gram deflection. Now my shafts were, I had to get the paper out because I've got, I've wrote it all down. Uh, the shafts went anywhere from right in the mid of the 105s to right at the very bottom of the 107 gram. So a gram and a half, that's pretty outstanding. Now my wedges are going to be in the 121, 122 range. Now, from a wedge perspective, we went with the Wilson Club. All right, they hit through it pretty good with the Wilson Club. Not a lot of not a lot of soul, but a whole bunch of bounce, a lot of radius, aggressive face, nice club. Oh, and it's forged. All right, then we're going to put on some grips and put on the grips. Now I could put a whole bunch of music in there and show you me doing it, but needless to say, they are all 49 grams. And that's also a good thing. So we're in pretty good shape when it comes to this. So the clubs are going to be a half of an inch over in length, and they're going to be basically a standard lie angle, which means a little flat when it's all said and done. No, I'm sorry, a little upright. Anyway, uh, so we're going to put them together. You're going to see a little bit of flowing going on because I've already spined them, and then we'll we'll talk about um, you know how they went together. So let's go, let's go put together a couple of clubs. And they, at the end, you got to stay to the end because that's when all the data is collected, right? When everything is finished and ready to go, then we'll have total weights, we'll have swing weights, and then we'll be able to tell you how they play. Okay? So let's put a couple of clubs together. Let's make some clubs! <laughs>
All right, you saw a flat line. You saw me doing the flat line oscillation, i.e., I put in a clamp, I put a laser on it, and I was looking for that line that goes up and down. One of the biggest things you have to know is that if you're flatlining it, and you can you use a vice? Yeah. Can you use the frequency machine? Yes. Can you use any clamp? Yes. Yes, you can. However, if you're clamping this way or clamping that way, you have to twang in the direction of the jaws. I mean, if you're like this, this way. If you're like this, this way. Why? Well, it's because it's more consistent. If you're trying to go in between, you can have a level of inconsistency because you may not tighten it enough and it might wiggle and it may not give you what you're looking for. That's the reason why I use my torque clamp, right? So it applies the same pressure every single time. And then I, I go inside and then I twang in the direction of the, of the jaw, which what you saw. Now, why do I do that? Well, I put in the frequency machine because it's a twofer. I'm checking the flex as well as checking the flow, right? Flow, flat line oscillation. So that's what we're doing. Now, a little bit more on flat line oscillation or flow. Is it the cure all end all of a golf club? No, no it's not. Does it make a more consistent golf club? Most certainly it does, right? Most certainly it does. You'll find out that there's golfers out there that can't live with it and there's golfers that have never lived with it and they're like, well, I play plenty of good game, I've never had it, so I don't need it. Could very well be true. There are others that say, I must have it because I know I play better with it because I know my clubs are balanced. Okay, it just depends. Again, in golf, it just depends. Now, from a building aspect, it does make a more consistent golf club. You're getting bending in the same profile, you get your flexes going the right way, everything's happening in that direction. So I don't understand why that people would fight that from a consistency point of view. Now back to the idea, we were talking about weights. We had everything weighed out, we've got everything flowed, we got everything taken care of. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna braid the tips, I'm going to glue them together, and now you gotta stay tuned for a little bit because when we come back, we'll have a semi-finished product. Well, no, we'll have a finished product. I'll even put on the grips and we will check swing weights and total weights and just see how this weighting comes about so you can see what a final product would look like. So let me finish this and we'll come back to that. All right, good morning. It's the next day and we've finished everything off. We've put, we finished all the ferrules, put all the grips on, did the bending, right? We also want to do bending prior to do the measuring, depending on how much we're moving it, but normally that's the path. And we started measuring. We started measuring for swing weights. And what we do is that is it's on our golf works. It's an, uh, probably one of the most reliable scales I've ever had. Are there digital ones and shadow scales out there? Yes, they're very fast. I just, over the years, you just get used to something and that's just what it is. And as we're seeing it, you know, what I saw on, I did not one, but two sets because we had the same shaft, uh, the same shaft, but different parameters, okay? So one was a half an inch long, like I told you in the beginning, one was standard. So when we took, let's do a little calculation on the second set. If D2, D2, well, D2 to D4 actually, is the standard weight for an iron, right? Standard weight for an iron. That assumes a 120 shaft, a 256 head at the five, and about a 46 gram uh, weight, 46 to 47 gram grip, all right? So we put on a 105 shaft, which is, you know, we're talking 15 grams. So that's about uh, two swing weight points, just shy of one. We went a little bit light in the head because that's just the way that they come, but the, the movement of the weight kind of helps out a little bit. So there's like three swing weight points there, plus the grip was just slightly heavier. I'd say about a half of a swing weight point. So if you start at like a D4, these all came out between D1 and D2. So it, the, the calculations do work at standard length, all right, at standard length. Now the other one, uh, the other one was a half inch over, so we knew it was gonna be heavier, right? A half inch is worth swing, three swing weight points, and he had a slightly larger grip so that it actually pulled it down. This is not like, oh, this is the greatest swing weight because I can give you a telephone pole and make it look feel like D4, but you'd never be able to lift it. That's the reason why this total weight is so important. All right, but what we did is we had, we were within one swing weight point again, 
going both ways from the top iron down into the pitching wedge. After the pitching wedge, all bets are off. And why do I say that? That's because you go in quarter lengths at that particular point, and unless the head weights follow that kind of measure, then no. However, some do, some don't. That's the beauty of these different clubs, right? So we get all that. So what does all that mean for quality? So we we know we measured everything out. Everything came out within, you know, it was within one or two grams either way on one thing, one or two grams either way on one thing, and one or two grams on the other as far as spacing goes. So when that all comes out, you pretty much have a, a slide, right, a minimum of three to a maximum of around six grams that could change depending on where they go. And that's the reason why you weight sort. That's the reason you go lightest to heaviest. That's so that makes everything fine. So on total weights, what we ended up being with is a difference between, you know, and I mean differences between total weights. It started at a minimum of five, which we were looking for seven, all right, a minimum of five and went to a maximum of nine. So nine is pretty big. And but if you look at seven plus or minus two, so we actually did pretty good on a couple of sets. Now, is that a lot of my doing? It only because I separate a lot of this stuff out. But a lot of things, if you pre measure, get things right in the beginning, a lot of things happen right on the end. That was the whole purpose of that. All right, so hopefully, you liked a lot of what you saw. If you would like, subscribe again. Again, remember the uh, live stream on Mondays, 17 30 Eastern time, and we can just talk golf all you want, just like we're doing here. And if you look at it, the, uh, let's see, it's over my left shoulder is a, well, in this particular point, you're going to probably see some, uh, a circle saying to subscribe, and then you'll see a movie or a movie. You'll, you'll see a video that uh, YouTube is recommending so that you can keep watching on the channel. Uh, as always, you know, thank you for watching Let's Make a Golf Club Volume 2, and there's a Volume 3 coming, and let's see your scores go low.